So hi everyone, welcome again to the maiden session, to the maiden edition rather of the Lagos DBT meetup. As you've heard, I'm Fini Folua Olas Boson, work as a technology consultant for KPMG. I'm hoping for a really exciting session today. I am a technology consultant at KPMG, there's a professional, a strong inclination towards building solutions with the modern data stack. And I'll be talking about the evolution of the modern data stack, making comparisons with the legacy data stack, paradigm shift was made, details are paradigm shift how it eventually happened, what triggered it, trends that led to it, and then the benefits of the modern data stack, especially compared to more traditional legacy data stacks. We're talking about the modern data stack. So I felt it was a good idea to just start at the common denominator, which is the data itself. We all know data is increasingly being recognized as an organizational asset. Data has value. It can have value. And the value of data, as we all know, is in fact that it helps to drive business decisions. Businesses make key decisions using data. Data informs key business decisions that businesses make. Use that to make money, reduce costs, avoid risks, you know, and gain significant value. And I'm sure the saying on the slide that data is new oil is something that's heard so many times among the audience. Yes, we can say that's true, along with the rise of many other data-related roles like data scientists, artificial intelligence, data engineers, data analysts, and I said, and I'm emphasizing on it, the fact that it can actually have value. It's only as valuable as the way it's, it's being treated, the way it's being used. So you, raw data in itself, just like oil, raw data is not valuable in itself just like oil, right? It can't really be used for much until it's been refined and processed. Raw data, there's certain processing activities that need to go on, right, before the, the data becomes valuable, before data can inform decisions and then give us the value that we expect from it. So there's that key intermediary phase, right, between the raw data and then the valuable data, all sorts of processing, the data cleaning, and engineering systems that support all this, right, before we can have data that can be used. I'm pretty sure that many of us in the audience have point in our careers and had instances where data was all over the place. There was so much data and then we weren't really sure what to do with it. And then the fact that, you know, we we're able to do all those fancy stuff with the data. And uh, we can see some statistics on the screen that show us that even till now, organizations um, find it difficult handling data, deriving maximum impact, maximum value from data that they have. The typical data pipeline or data processing, data preparation workflow, we have a hypothetical organization, right? In this hypothetical organization, we have different sources of data. And then the first phase, what's natural to do is to consolidate these sources of data from, you know, for example, we have ERP systems, transactional databases, all that data can be consolidated into a single data store. And then in the, the next slide, that data would now be worked on there's certain transformation that, or data processing, aggregation and modeling that will go on to become ready data. And then eventually in the third phase, analytics and visualization, machine learning, data science, business reporting. That's really the typical data pipeline or workflow that we have. Before we move on, we will now look at more traditional approach. What has been the legacy approach, data integration. So everything we've described so far, the um, consolidation of data into a data store, transforming it before it's being used. And then what we have on the screen now is the traditional legacy approach towards data integration, which we're referring to as the ETL approach. We can see ETL is just extract, transform, and load. So we have different sources, data, data being extracted and first loaded into a staging server. So all the transformations are being done in memory. And then because, okay, maybe just to give it some context of the ETL approach to data integration, the ETL approach was uh, introduced decades ago. And at that time, data warehouse was quite expensive, was quite tedious because the cost of storage was quite high, much higher than it is now. So back to the transform stage, you had the transform data in the staging server it would only transfer the data models and transform data that's needed to into the warehouse. Because the goal really here was to minimize the amount of data being stored in the data warehouse because Again, running and maintaining the data warehouse, using the data warehouse was quite expensive. So we'll walk through the ETL pipeline. Okay, so we're looking at this in more detail. So the workflow would now entail, first of all, you scope the different relevant data sources that you need. So we saw examples like um, Zendesk, Google Analytics, transactional databases and the likes. So after that, rather, 
you would uh, determine the analytics need for the ETL pipeline. So at this stage, you're asking yourself, what kind of questions do we want to answer? What kind of models do we want to build? What kind of data do we want to feed into machine learning models? What kind of business reports do we want to generate? What kind of data needs do our business departments actually have? And how can we serve that? So you determine the needs that the ETL pipeline should serve. And then you eventually go on to define the models needed by the business users and create the functional script for extracting, transforming, and loading. We can see on this slide that you first of all have to determine the analytics need for that ETL pipeline. So it's pretty much customized to that use case, to the needs of the organization at that particular point in time. Okay, so you begin to ask yourself, what then happens when needs change? So in the next slide, we'll see some of the challenges. There are some things we can already start thinking of. We already mentioned that the business needs, the ETL pipeline has been designed or kind of customized for business needs of the organization at that particular point in time. So what happens when the business changes? You'd have to react to most of the ETL pipeline all over again. And that means that you know, data engineers have to be on standby waiting for another phase or another round of data transformation just to ensure that everything is up and running and the businesses we don't keep on streaming at them where's my report you know how do i get this how do i get that those are the issues that would arise with the use of the etl pipeline that extracts transform and load and this is because the transformation is tightly coupled with extracting and loading as well as you know you could also have instances where the operational data sources that we saw what if the nature or the schema of as upstream data sources? Now. We'll also see how the rise of cloud-hosted data warehouses have also helped to usher in this new paradigm that we're going to see. Cloud database, make cloud-hosted data warehouses rather, make it easy for organizations to get a data warehouse, put in their data, and then they're able to scale efficiently rather than having to acquire on-premise infrastructure. If you want to scale with on-prem infrastructure, it's much more tedious and even more expensive. So you can just you pay for what you use with the cloud-hosted data warehouse can scale efficiently, it's relatively cheap, and then you know things are really easy. So this makes it easy for you to load more data into your warehouse. How these recent trends have actually necessitated or triggered this change, this shift in the data integration paradigm. So in the next slide, we'll see the ELT approach. So rather than having ETL, as we saw in previous slides, we're seeing ELT extract, load, and then you transform. So again, looking at our hypothetical organization, we can extract data from operational resources and then load it directly into the data warehouse. So we can see that there isn't any need for data staging server in this case. So you load it into your data warehouse and in your data warehouse, you can do your transformations. You can do your transformations with DBT. We'll see demonstration later. So in the next slide, we can look at the um, workflow of the ELC. This takes care of some of the challenges we're highlighting in the ETL approach, right? So first of all, you obviously still have to scope and determine relevant data sources just as with TL pipeline, but now, you can extract and load data from your different sources directly into the warehouse. And then it's kind of like you load now and then transform later approach, right? So you load your warehouse and then you can now determine the analytics needs with different business users, what kind of questions we want to answer and then do your transformations from there. You can start cleaning your data right in your warehouse. You can delete columns, create new columns and all that, rename fields. So these are things that would typically be done in data transformation. Then after that, obviously, data consumption by business users can happen. The next slide will show us, again, what we've already you know, kind of figured out, right? That the ELT pipeline solves most of these problems for us. When there's a change to operational data sources, your data is already in data warehouse and you already have loaded it. All you need to do is just retransform. As a result, managing the ELT and maintaining the ELT pipeline is much less time and resource consuming as well. So this just means that data engineers will be able to focus on more valuable tasks, more valuable activities that can you know, really generate value for the organization. And then also scaling becomes easier and efficient because there isn't that bottleneck of the staging server anymore. So on the next slide, we'll now be looking at how the modern data stack begins to take shape. So we've seen how that shift from the ETL approach to the ELT approach kind of makes things easy for us. So how do we put everything in context of the modern data stack? So in addition to the ETL pipeline, the modern data stack typically will consist of following. So you have an ELT pipeline, cloud-based data warehouse, where you can easily scale, efficiently store your data and do your transformations in. So you have a data transformation tool that helps you to do that using your know, SQL queries and many other perks that come along with it as we will see in the demonstration. So you can use DBT to do your data transformation and then you can also have data visualization tools. This really will be the modern data stack. Now we can see that you don't really need a 
a data engineer to stand by to wait on you to do tenuous data transformation tasks. You can have, so in the next slide, we'll see how the rise of the analytics engineer you know, comes into play. So the analytics engineer with the modern data stack, analytics engineers isn't really required to do tenuous you know, data transformation tasks. As soon as data into the warehouse, he just does transformations, serves up reports, does data visualization tasks, and then that's it. So that's really the rise of data analytics engineer. If we can see the value of data, modern data stack is already apparent. So there's time and cost savings due to the deployment of a cloud hosted data warehouse reduced engineering overhead, much less manpower is needed for gain, not so valuable tasks. That bottleneck has been taken away already. You just load your data into your warehouse and do your transformations. You can operate with a much more efficient and leaner data team. And you have data visibility as well. So you have all your data that you need in your warehouse. So unlike instances where you have a staging server and then you have your warehouse that only contains data that is needed. So that's really it about the, the modern data stack. I hope this has been able to kind of emphasize for demo session. I hope a lot more things put into perspective. Thank you very much, Faye, for that session. So just to give people a bit of context. Now, I've had a lot of people reach out to me on LinkedIn. And one thing I tell them is start doing all those amazing stuff regarding analytics, machine learning. There needs to be a right infrastructure in place. CTL pipeline approach actually requires a lot of data engineers, BI developers, all of those things. But now with the evolution of the cloud infrastructure, like we rightly mentioned, the BigQuery, the Snowflake, the data analysts can literally supercharge any organization. So that means just with your little knowledge of SQL, which is what DBT is built on, you can actually do an amazing stuff. So thank you very much, Finn. You're going to work with KPMG. You have an experience in cyberspace, and now you're also with the rise of cybersecurity risk. How secure is a cloud-based data warehouse, and how is how is a data warehouse different from traditional database? How different is a data warehouse from a data? A data warehouse is essentially a database, right? But it's a database that has been optimized for analytical workloads. Think about transactional databases. Well, a data warehouse now has been optimized in the sense that it has some certain configurations and features that make it more suited to these analytical workloads. One of those configurations would be columnar-wise storage of data, where data is stored more like a column-wise as opposed to the entire database, much more efficient. Obviously, there are many other quite the myriad of solutions that you can employ to ensure that data within your warehouse is secure as well as other information assets that you have within your organization. So I hope that answers your question. 